Oh, right, all right, all right. What the heck is going on, everybody? We are here with a StarCraft match between a human and a Dahaka. What the hell does that mean? Guess what? This is Scarlet, the Queen of Blades, one of the best Zerg players in the world. Champion StarCraft player, but she is facing off against an AI. That's right, it is the new Die Star AI straight out of uh, China, uh, developed by uh, a bunch of people over there at a company working on that self-learning AI. So it's going to be playing over here in the bottom left under the Dahaka. Uh, ID. Now, as far as I know, and I haven't fully read everything about this and that sort of stuff, so um, definitely, you know, fill in the blanks. Let me know in, in the chat, in the comments, if you guys, uh, if I, if I kind of misinterpret something here. Um, this is kind of going to be a first react sort of thing, but essentially what happened is uh, I know Harston put out a video playing some games against it and kind of commentating them and talking about how Ayasonu explained to him some of the weaknesses of the AI and some of the strengths and how, you know, he got him to play against a bunch of different agents and that sort of stuff. Uh, obviously, each agent is kind of like its own individual little siloed uh, self-learning AI that's learned to play the game a little bit differently. Um, he put out a video and then Scarlet basically messaged me and she said, hey, I played a bunch against it. Do you want to you check out the games? And I was like, oh, of course. I was like, heck yeah, Scarlet, I'd love to. And she said, oh, I reckon this was the funnest game I played against it. Check this one out. And we then spent a week troubleshooting me figuring out how to get the replay to work. And that's why this video is so late. So <laughs> for those of you who are like, dude, why are you so slow to get on this? I'm sorry. We had, I had a whole bunch of tech issues and I finally figured out how to get the replay to work. It was a really simple thing. I just had my folder. I had to create a custom folder and, um, and I had it named slightly wrong. So, GG, but we are here now. Zerg versus Zerg, I believe, is all it can play at the moment, which is nice because it allows it to play a mirror matchup. If you guys remember Alpha Star, the Google uh, DeepMind project, uh, its its agent that it made, its AI that was self-learning, it also started off only being able to play PvP, right? I think the first match that it did was PvP versus TLO and Mana and this sort of stuff. So, it was. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how this one develops. Now, so far. It looks like this may have been a 17 hatch for Dahak. I don't even care what Scarlet's doing over on her side of the map. But uh, but Dystar seems to be going, I think it was 17 hatch because the natural finished a few seconds later than the main. But two queens, Ling speed, pulls one worker off gas. This is looking very similar to a pro build. The drones are being individually manually microed onto the minerals. I, it really feels like, so I assume they're using similar methodology to Alpha Star. And if that's the case, it will simply start by copying things it's seen from other people, right? What is it doing with this drone? Baneling Nest. Ah, and it's doing the old school Baneling Nest as well. Yeah, yeah, and because this is on 2017 balance, I believe it is, right? Or, or 2017, 2018? I'm not sure when this map pool was, Neuropugnancy, but definitely quite a few years ago. It's an older balance patch that it is played and trained on, and it's also doing things that we used to do at that time. So you can tell that it's actually learnt the game from older styles. These days, everyone walls off the front, but back then, more 2016, 2017, but in 2019, it was still a little more popular. People would build this as for a little queen pocket there. So interesting to see it's doing some older things. Apparently, this is the 2019 uh, balance period, by the way. So far, Scarlet is out droning it. Now, there were a couple of restrictions that Haston mentioned in his video that Ayasonu said, look, okay, I, it's not perfect. Star struggles to understand the information game. It doesn't deny its opponent's scouting, and it also doesn't look for scouting as much as it should. It doesn't seem to understand the value for information, and that we can see because it hasn't actually gone in. It's got good overlord vision to see anything moving out, but even, yeah, I mean, technically, it hasn't actually gone in, and so it's trying to play this very middle-of-the-road style. The weakness of doing that, as you can see, is that it's now seven workers already. So Scarlet, she's like, hey, all right, I'm, I'm poking with Zergens. I don't see you being aggressive. I can just get out on workers. Now she's going to have to make some more Ling Bane to defend what looks like a Ling Bane pressure coming out of Die Star. But uh, that was exactly Alpha Star's problem as well, guys. Alpha Star never understood the information game. It was actually so much better at, at Protoss than the other races because it was always using Oracles and Adepts to harass. And as a result, it would scout things. It would go in with the Oracles and go, oh, you're building Dark Templar, I'll make detection, that sort of stuff, right? But when it played Zerg and Terran, its core strategies didn't involve as much harassment, and therefore it wouldn't get that inadverted information and go from there. Oh my god! I'm surprised it didn't react quicker there. It could have actually blown up Scarlet Zerglings, but apparently it does have some APM restraints on it. And you can see right now, Scarlet is actually massively out spamming the AI. She's at more than double its APM now. Keeping 
keeping in mind, it's not going to misclick or anything like that. It doesn't have to move its cursor around. It's obviously going to be more efficient with those actions. But uh, interesting to see Scarlet sends a Ling run by around. More Lings rallying across here. It's just going to keep a bit of a train going. Its fourth base gets cancelled by Scarlet. It does have safety banelings. They're going to go out there hunting, but Scarlet splitting off Zerglings for it at the same time. We see Dice Star down here in the bottom side of the map. It's trying to send Zerglings in, looking for banelings, but when she pulls it back, it pulls it back. So very high level reactive micro from Dice Star. But it's still down five workers, so it's losing in the macro game by the looks of it. That being said, I like the attempt to just take a fourth base. The drone even attacked a baneling there. Uh, okay, it's going to lose a queen. Scarlet does get a nice pickup, but she loses a lot of zerglings to a baneling. It's thinking about splitting up and poking around with these zerglings. Oh, does take a really messy fight there. I don't know why those zerglings didn't just go for the natural queen. Oh, one baneling gets a hit. Now, it doesn't seem to want to trade on just two or three zerglings. Unless it has to, it's going to go for the natural now. She's got roaches coming out. Scarlet is up 12 workers right now. These Zerglings still on both sides pressuring. And from the games that I skimmed, and Scarlet actually streamed a whole bunch of games against this, I noticed it would often just keep Zerglings in multiple areas on the edge of the enemy territory. And you would, I mean, this is going to really stress out most players. Most players will crumble just because it's not actually fighting, but it always feels like it's about to fight, right? And look at that, it's actually into the main, it's into the main. Oh, she plugs the gap with the queen, buys herself a bit of time. Uh, a few more roaches and lings come up there, but two roaches won't beat this many zerglings. On the bottom side, she's going to defend with the banelings, but these roaches are getting overwhelmed. Her queen put up a very good valiant effort. She can just not lose too many drones, she'll be okay. Catching up on workers slowly is Dystar, but Dystar, it has a much later lair. It's adding more queens, and it's finally building its first roaches behind this. Those Zerglings do go down, these Zerglings as well. Let's look at the unit's loss tab. It looks like it's pretty even on both sides. Die Star slightly ahead. Scarlet, though, of course, has had that worker advantage. That being said, Die Star has a fourth base on the way as well. Man, and the way it manages those Zerglings, keeping your Zerglings so deep in enemy territory like that, most people would stress out. Um, also, most people would put an Overlord down here because right now, Zerglings have very little vision. If she runs a Bailing forward, you get like one second to react. You can see how insane its reaction speed is, right? Just in terms of how quick it notices things, reacts to them, it's more comfortable in AI because unlike a human, it's not going to get distracted and be like, oh, I'm injecting my hatchery. Oh, I lost 20 Zerglings. So it's more willing to hang out in dangerous areas. Now, I don't know what the hell that roach is doing. And you can see it even shift clicked it back and now it sends it back towards. So it really likes to have these like spotting units to far forward. I think this roach is pretending it's an overlord or something. It's so bizarre. Um, Scarlet's going to go for a drop, Baneling drop. She's also scouting with an Overseer. And it looks like just plus two, Roach speed. It's building an eighth queen and Roaches. Now, this is something that Alpha Star's ultimate version ended up doing a lot, was building Roaches and Queens. Now, it was mostly doing it as a two or three base all-in push. Whereas you can see here, Die Star's up on 74 workers. It has a good economy. But I think the reason it builds so many queens is because they're such a general purpose unit. So the thing is, guys, if you're a baboon who doesn't actually know how to understand what's going on in the game of StarCraft or how to react, you really want to make sure that you're actually just doing things that work in every situation. And guess what? If you're playing solid StarCraft, but completely unreactive StarCraft like most AIs do, then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to love mass and queens because they are going to defend muter swaps. They're going to transfuse and keep you alive defensively. They're generally a unit that will keep you safe, even though humans don't want to be building queens at this point because it lowers your army supply. They don't have a lot of damage and you can't really make any aggressive plays with them. Scarlet goes in with a baneling drop. No reaction from it. And oh, Scarlet, Scarlet, she should be dropping right here. Oh, I mean, she gets some kills. It definitely could be more. She's now killed, of course, 11 of those workers. She's starting to take out its overlords. It's interesting. It, it doesn't put them on patrol paths. Notice how Scarlet, her overlords are on these triangle paths. Now, why triangles? It's so that if it's on one line, you can anticipate. If it's just a single waypoint, but if you do two quick waypoints and a bit of a triangle, it's very hard for the other player to actually realize where that's going to be and pre predict it and take it down with files. Now, she's going forward as Scarlet. She's taking decent fights, but Tahaka, aka Dice Star, is doing all right. Even though it's down in upgrades, she has the plus two upgrade advantage. Dice Star's hanging on pretty well. Has the Roach advantage right now. Scarlet with the worker advantage. And remember, she killed some, some workers. That's what reversed that. She has a bit more bank to work with, but she doesn't really want to take a pitch battle. And she's cornering her army. Oh, Transfuse is coming forward as well. Look at that. Transfuse is blanketing across. I told you guys, the power of the Queens. Queens are always going to find some utility. And of course, these guys can transfuse off creep. 
More roaches running in on the bottom, though. That's huge. Yeah, as long as this army can get away, she's got to get that one home. Then things like this roach run by will be good, but it does pull back its drones. It brings roaches down here. Overall, this is an incredibly competent play. I would like to see it start up a carapace upgrade, maybe tech a little bit further forward. The queen's in the middle of the map. Will to get taken out, and ooh, running around off creep is never good for those. Roaches in the top, catch a bunch of Scarlet's Ravages. You can see the unit's lost tab is actually way in the favor of Die Star at this point. I think it's a little better at judging fights than Scarlet is. And Scarlet, of course, pulling on back. I don't really think there's too many big balance changes on this patch that I've, I've, I've forgotten to talk about. 2019 ZVZ, I don't really see anything being different with this particular situation at all, but Scarlet's taking an awful fight right now. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. It got a really good arc. Roaches and Queens reinforcing from the bottom. The Roach Ravager coming in from the top. Talk about the concave of all concaves. And it's doing a Roach run by on the bottom as well. Oh shit, Scarlet might be going to D-Town. This is looking really rough for Scarlet right now. She is in a very bad position. These five Ravages landing sick Biles. So you can see it doesn't dodge those Biles perfectly. It's pulling back these Roaches on the bottom. Even though they do outnumber, still rallying to the middle of this map is Die Star. Is it injecting? It's not injecting, guys. It pulled every queen to the front. But because it has four hatcheries, maybe that's not too bad. I mean, you can tell it's floating money because it's building queens. That, that tells you that it did float money. So it's, it's doing a bit of a weird choice there to, to completely stop injecting the hatcheries. Interesting to see how that goes. Roach Ravager coming forward. Queen's there as well. The Roaches do get cleaned up behind Scarlet's base. Scarlet is still up in the work account. Losing her fifth will not be the end of the world. As Die Star knocks it back to four base versus four base. And Roach Ravager is going to come forward. And finally, she's going to clean these queens up. Looks like one of them will be able to withdraw. It's a real close game right now. OV speed got made for Scarlet. Remember, that didn't get made either for Die Star. And Scarlet, got to be careful there. Oh, I was wondering where that bile was, but it was behind this little tower. That's why I couldn't see it. Fifth base in the bottom now for Scarlet. So Scarlet's uh, kind of run into a bit of a wall in those last few fights. She's still down a thousand resources in the units lost, but consistently ahead in the income. So that's that's meaning that she's maxed a bit earlier. She's still got that carapace upgrade, which is finally coming in. And uh, do we still have no injects? Does it not lava inject? Holy crap, did they train this thing by showing it replays of dark? Guys, it doesn't know how to lava inject. It's out of lava like all the time. It really should be stacking up some more uh, some more lava there. Die Star. I mean, it must have been. I know I know it injected at the start of the game. Did it just stop doing that later on in the game? And why? Is it is it just thinking of queens as fighting units? This is so bizarre. I'm continuing to lose overlords because it's not using even a basic patrol path to make this difficult. So it's definitely lacking some, some tactics, which Scarlet is using. Oh, damn. It actually walks into Biles there as well. That's interesting. So it doesn't seem to be too advanced at dodging Biles. Scarlet drops roaches in the main and it continues to work angles like this. Oh, and it really does not dodge Biles. So I think Scarlet has caught onto something here. I think she's realized and this is this is this like this is kind of the thing you do when you realize you're playing someone who's really bad at micro or something like that you're like oh my god they don't dodge storms and you keep just like baiting them into you know going in running backwards and you know they're going to run into your side storm so she's kind of doing a lot of that scarlet's kind of like oh i'm gonna just you know run in drop biles run away run run away drop biles run away drop biles it's it's dodged some of them but only some so i don't really know what the limiting factor is if we go to its camera is this realistic so we're on its camera right now i don't know how realistic this is in terms of what it's looking at, I don't think it is. Yeah, yeah, no, no, because no. it's microing units all over the map right now. So I was like, I wonder if that works if we lock onto its camera and cast from there. No, it does not. Roach is going to come in and take take the natural damage. I mean, so many workers going down for Dysar, but Scarlet's eating big vials as well. And once again, I think she's outnumbered here. She's got to be so careful because she's been doing so much economic damage. And Scarlet may be forgetting the fundamentals of Starcraft. Guys, if you kill a lot of your opponent's workers, their army is probably going to be stronger than yours. I mean, it's always hard in Roach Wars because you want to keep the pressure up and keep trading if it's, if it's going well for you. But she's got to keep these Ravages alive. She's pulling back. She's going to wait for the Roach Remax. Another big bile, but does dodge most of those biles and it's actually scarlet who eats another big wave of biles damn only 37 drones though right now for die star its economy has been absolutely sent to destination cucked and uh yeah it's, it's not looking great for for die star's economy it's kind of all in right now Ooh, okay and biles are going to be going down zoning out on both sides it's walking queens across the map again 
which are just, I mean, they're, they're useful on the defense, on the offense, off creep especially. I think it's really questionable for the amount of minerals you dump into this unit. Uh, these, these queens really just keep it on three or four queens, keep them injecting at home, uh, bringing the queens across the map, something that AIs just love to do. But I, 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 I gotta say, guys, I don't know. I think they might have shown them some baboon replays. I don't like the queens because they actually block your army. So you can't move in and out. You can't dodge Biles very well. The queens are too uh, unmaneuverable. Anytime your opponent has like splash damage, disruptors, anything like that, they do become a little awkward. Let's see what happens. Queens getting taken down. Big flank from the left side. Scarlet knows that she's just got to defend this army and then she's got it in the bag. She's surrounding the Ravagers. She should do a bit of a spready there. She eats a few big Biles, but those Ravagers, she's on top of them now. Um, interesting. Looking at the way it places its Biles, it places them... Often, I, I think in some of those scenarios, it should have placed them more defensively and it should have pulled south. So I think Dahaka, aka Dystar, maybe it should have ran away the moment it saw those roaches coming. But because it had queens up front, it had a less mobile army and all it's doing is making roaches, making ravages. It's going to keep trying to fight. But of course, Scarlet getting workers. She's on hive. She's on 57 workers versus 37. She has a sixth base up. This fifth base never got any use and uh, still has not done a lava inject for the last five minutes. Of course, it doesn't matter at this point because you don't have any money. So you've got more than enough lava after losing all those workers. But uh, interesting to see how this goes. And it looks like Dystar is going to get taken out. Scarlet's going to push on forwards. This is really interesting because it, it did do a lot of things very well. Overall, I'm very impressed. I think, what have we seen? What were the main problems with it? Well, number one, uh, the first glaring one was it sitting in corrosive files a little bit too much. Um, it not injecting and obsessing with pulling queens definitely was a thing. Um, you know, Twitch chat's pointing out right now, it never floated money. It had a good sense of how much lava it needed. I, I absolutely disagree. It was building queens to spend money. And queens are a terrible unit for their damage output. So it, it, I think it's, it's kind of like when you watch a new player who spends their money really well, but it's because they have no workers. It's kind of like, like that sort of thing where it's like, hey, wait a second, you had enough lava if you're building three or four queens at a time. But that's a lot of minerals going into those queens, which are being used as, as super beta tier fighting units. So I, I think when you get people who understand how to pull back, use files well against queens, it's kind of just not a good idea. Um, apparently, they did program it with some fantasy GG timing as well. It's trying to rebuild a spawning pool. What? <laughs> I guess you have to completely kill it. I, I guess they didn't teach it how to GG, which is fair enough. And it does go down. Scarlet with a lovely victory there. That was really interesting. If you guys like this game, let me know. I can ask Scarlet for the rest of the replays. Hopefully, I can cast all of those for you when she gets back from, I believe she's over at the uh, Shopify team house right now in their headquarters. But uh, yeah, let me know if you guys enjoyed this one, what questions you have. I have so many questions racing through my head, so I think it's inevitable. I'll do another video looking at some of the other games. Um, I heard there was ones where it didn't know how to make detection amongst other things. So really curious to check it out. So thanks for watching everybody. We'll catch you in the next one. And uh, I definitely think we'll be doing a follow up on this because this AI does look very promising, especially the fact that it doesn't, even though it goes Roach Ravager Queen, like Alpha Star, it doesn't just all in with it. The way that the kind of peak Alpha Star Zerg AIs ended up doing, it did go to a much higher work account, had a bit of multi-prong action going. So really cool to see. And I want to see how it evolves. As far as I know, they're still working on it. Whereas Alpha Star, of course, got abandoned. So fingers crossed we get more of this.